Hello, my name is Tim Clark, founder of Cars on Oil Field Services. Welcome to Coring 101. This is episode 5, Specialist Coring Systems, Wireline Systems. In a previous episode, we looked at the basic rotary coring system, and in this episode, we will look at wireline systems. There are two fundamental wireline systems, a wireline retrieval system and a wireline sidewall coring system, and they're very different. I'm going to look at the wireline retrieval system first. The most expensive part of any coring operation is the tripping time, and the wireline retrieval system is an option to combat this. A wireline retrieval system operates on the same principle to cut the core, but delivers the core to the surface using wireline, removing the need to trip the drill pipe. Traditional wireline retrieval systems cut small gauge core, roughly 2 and 3 quarter inch diameter in an 8 and a half inch hole, and is tripped through standard drill pipe. More modern wireline systems can cut much larger gauge core, up to 3.5 inches in 8.5 inch hole, but require special drill pipe to be provided. With the wireline system, the inner barrel has a latching mechanism at the top of the swivel head assembly, which is used to recover the inner barrel. As mentioned, the core is cut in the manner of a traditional rotary coring system, but it is the recovery that is different. The whole inner barrel assembly is recovered using wireline, leaving the outer barrel in the hole. The whole inner barrel assembly is then replaced by pumping it down through the drill pipe to seat in the outer barrel after recovery of the core. Another advantage of this system is that a drill rod can be pumped down which converts the coring BHA to a drilling BHA, allowing drilling to continue without needing to trip the drill pipe and change out the BHA. One disadvantage of the wireline retrieval system is that gas expansion during pullout may cause serious structural damage to the core, limiting the types of analysis which can be carried out. For this reason, when looking at wireline coring, you need to seriously consider the information you require from the core before committing to a project. The other wireline coring operation is to take sidewall cores as part of the wireline logging program. Strictly speaking, these should be considered more plugs than cores. There are two main reasons to take sidewall cores. First of which is to sample formation that has not been cored, and the second is to take samples of formation where the core has been lost. For example, where soft formation has been washed away, or jamming has occurred and the core has been milled away. There are two types of sidewall coring, and they are percussion and rotary. Percussion sidewall coring involves firing hollow, chisel-edged bullets into the borehole wall. Force required to achieve this can affect the formation, causing fracturing or compaction, and thereby affecting analysis data. Percussion coring has been more or less replaced by rotary sidewall coring. Rotary sidewall coring essentially utilises multiple miniature core barrels taking plugs from the wall of the borehole. The rotary sidewall sampling tool is powered by either circulating mud through the tool or an electric motor. Rotary sidewall cores are generally of a higher quality than percussion sidewall cores. In episode 1, I mentioned that sidewall cores are normally 1 and 1 8th of an inch to 1 3 quarter inch in length by 11 16th of an inch to 1 inch in diameter. However, there are a few systems on the market, such as the Halliburton Examiner, Baker Hughes Max Core, and Schlumberger's XL Rock System, that will take sidewall cores of up to 2 and a half inches by 1 and a half inches. Analysis that can be carried out on sidewall cores is more limited than on full bore cores and is also affected by larger degrees of uncertainty. In this episode, we have touched briefly on the two wireline coring systems, and in the next episode, we're going to continue looking at the specialised coring systems, focusing on sampling systems.